Look who just stepped into the studio, Sting. He goes by one name. Hi, Ro. <laughs> oh, Sting. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Great to be here. Thank you. Uh, um, all right. Well, Tuesday night was the opening of the play, the big one, the musical, the whole deal, the whole enchilada. Sunday night, you're in New York, you're at the Tonys, you're singing, you're getting ready for it. And then here it was Tuesday night. How'd it go? Hugely important evening, you know, to see how, how the Chicago public took to it. And uh, I was anxious, absolutely. But at the end of the night, I have to say, my feeling is immense relief and gratitude for an audience that was warm, understanding, uh, caring, understood every word, and loved it, <laughs> and stood up. Well, that's and great. Stood up at the end, so I was more than happy. Did you come out at the end? Did you do that? No, 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 I'm too shy. I was actually hiding behind the soundboard. Really? Yeah. Is that the best way? Now, this is your first time doing a Broadway kind of play. Did you talk to other producers and writers and stuff? And they, you, it's, it's sort of like to me, it's, it's a little like the producers, the movie, the producers. You got to sort of hide back there. <laughs> oh, wait to see. What, well, I don't know. We'll get to the, we'll get to the finances of this in a moment. But, but you know, you're sitting back there and you just want to, you just want to stick your head in and hear. I didn't want to sit in a seat. I'm, t I'm too restless. I felt like a, like a, a an expectant father, you know, waiting mm -hmm. for the birth. So I was kind of pacing and uh, telling the sound guys to turn this up or turn this down, just to have something to do rather than just sit there. But as the evening progressed, I, uh, I relaxed more. People were laughing in the right places <laughs> and, and crying and, and joining in. So uh, it, it couldn't have gone better. It really couldn't. It's great. So are you... Uh, as as you're uh, as you're working here, so we, people should know this. Uh, this this show, the last ship, is uh, a very personal story for you. It's based on an album that you did, which was the concept of the album to also do this. As well, a, as a it's, a it's really about my hometown in, in the northeast of England. I come from a shipyard town. Mm -hmm. The end of my street was was a shipyard, and one of my earliest memories, some of my earliest memories of giant ships blocking out the sun and towering over the houses. So I was born in this very strange environment. Um, I didn't want to end up in the shipyard. Uh, it, was a, it was a very dangerous place, a very toxic place. And yet they built some of the biggest ships ever built on planet Earth and at the end of my street. So we were both immensely proud of what, what happened there. Mm -hmm. And this is an allegory about what, 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 what may have happened you know, after the yard closed. So it's, uh, it's, it's a gesture of, uh, about community. It's about community. And, and the, our, our hero here wants to leave his town, right? And Go see what the world is like. He's a he's bit like me. He's not me, but he's a bit like me. So uh, he's in exile. He leaves, and he has to deal with a lot of things when he returns. His father's dead. Uh, I won't give you another surprise. I'm not going to spoil the plot. But All right. He has to deal with a lot of ghosts, and has to uh, really um, join the community again. And when you were uh, when you were writing this, was it originally designed as a concept album, or was it designed to do this? You know, it was designed to be a play. I'd sort of lost the mojo to, to write songs, wondering you know where, where, where they would go, because they didn't want to tailor songs for a top 40 radio anymore, I wasn't that interested. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, what about doing a theatrical uh, piece that uh, where I could write for other people, about other people, and, and put, you know, take me to the side, as it were. And that really stimulated my uh, creative juices. So let's talk a little bit about that. It's an interesting thing. I think there's a lot of artists now who are not quite sure where the niche is anymore, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's it, because music, radio, isn't even the driver anymore. Nope. The downloads are the driver. Mm -hmm. And, the, and they're free. Right, exactly. Right, <laughs> so it's a lot harder to make dough. Although if you still, you still get licensing, that's good. Uh, but is there a, uh, where, where do you see, obviously there are stations that, that continue to play your music and play the police yeah. music and all of that, but, but they're not going to take new product. I mean, you can go to every radio station in the country that plays you and they won't put something new on that. Right? I, I, don't, I don't know what the, the a successful model for the music business will, will end up as. I really don't know. Streaming, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, we don't get paid enough for that. I mean, I'm not complaining. I've, I've made a pot of money. But for younger musicians trying to make a living, you, know, you can either make a killing in this business, but you can't make a living. It's, it's hard to make a living. It's an excellent observation. So, so you decided this was, uh, this was the outcropping of that thought process in your head, or you really wanted to tell this story? I want, it's a very compelling story for me to tell, because it's, you know, in, a, in an allegorical way, it is about me. It is about me leaving a community, exiling myself from a community, and then having to find inspiration by returning. It's about, it's about returning home. Yeah. And uh, now, all right, speaking of this, now you're in Chicago You're for, what, six, eight weeks, right? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here like a doctor, you know, depending on what the patient needs. If the patient needs a transfusion or, you know, a, a 
a replacement, an arm replacement. We have a heart. We've definitely got a heart. <laughs> right. uh, we have a big meeting today and see think little things are going to change. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, sh the audience has been the one part of the of the equation that's been missing. Without an audience, you don't know what's working. You don't know what needs fixing. And we got a, a, a lot of clues last night about things we, we, we can change. But generally, the feeling was very positive. So, Is that hard for you, since this is so much a part of you? Were there, were there moments uh, when you watch the audience responding to this, and you think, oh, I really wanted that to work, and it didn't? Or I was surprised at how well something worked? Most things worked extremely well. I mean, it was, it was uncanny. It couldn't have gone better. I really have no complaints. Wow, that's great. I'm thrilled. So, all right, so you're here, and, and a lot of shows, Spam a lot did this here. There's a lot of other great shows that have gone off to Broadway. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Chicago likes to think of itself as sort of a, uh, an access point to a Tony Award win. You know, sort of a, a year Wouldn't from that be now. Great. So when you were sitting, oh, now, all right, you were there Sunday nights. You're in New York. You're playing the Tonys. Uh, were you thinking, I hope a year from now I'm standing up on the stage? Does that mean anything to you? I've learned not to look up. I, I just treat every day as it comes. You know, my, my real thing was to get through the first night in Chicago. Have mm -hmm. people in Chicago appreciate what we did, and then move on to the next hurdle. But you know, we have another show tonight, another one the night after. Right. And it's got to be great every night. And if people want to see this, and it, how much will it change? Do you think over this the six week um, run here? You know, I, I've no way of telling. I think incrementally it will change. Does it get shorter? Does it get longer? I, I, I you think things maybe to add? maybe five minutes could come off it. Yeah. Without, you know, losing the story. It's interesting because, like in a film, right? When you're working on a film, you can make that decision, and yeah. no one is ever the wiser. Yeah. Right, but people, you and I'm sure that Sting has fans who are fairly rabid, uh, and there are probably some who are going to be there in the early days, and then they're going to write you about what it was that that they saw. They don't. You think. know, I think there are some a certain type of uh, uh, audience that comes to previews as opposed to when it's actually open because they like to be the first on their block to see something. They also like to be part of the process because they are part of the process. Mm -hmm. Their opinions matter, and so it's an interesting group of people. And uh, I spoke to a lot of people last night. No one asked for their money back. <laughs> um, they all had lovely things to say and not just, you know, blowing smoke up my rear. Yeah. They were they were genuine theatre people and uh, I, I couldn't ask for any That's of that. That's great. That's great. So then it goes to New York and it starts its Broadway run and uh, obviously you're all booked in. It's all figured out there. People, by the way, we should do this at this moment. If people would like to come see this before it leaves for Broadway, uh, tickets are available for groups of 10 or more by calling Broadway and Chicago group sales at 312-977-1710. And they're also available at all Broadway and Chicago box offices or Broadway and Chicago ticket line 800-775-2000. I think I'm sending a lot of things. Or how about just, just let's start one place, broadwayinchicago.com. That's a good way to start there. Wow. There is a, um, so as you head into New York now, do you have to go, is this cast moving, this exact cast yeah. moving? Yeah. cast, this production. I mean, I'm very pleased with the set. The set's beautiful. It's full of it's full of surprises. It's amazing how, like, I, I obviously you guys have toured for, you've toured as a solo act and with the police for decades now. We shouldn't say how long. Let's been <laughs> five, ten years now, Sting. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, you see these big rigs pulling in backstage, right? It's always such an amazing thing. It's one of the sexiest parts of the business. But, the, but in theater, it's the same deal, right? These gigantic rigs and they have to move this really complex and sophisticated stuff and, and it's enormously technical I, yeah. I was uh, you know when we in rehearsal here in Chicago I, I couldn't believe it the, the actual stores looked like Cape Canaveral there's so many workstations there with computers the lighting department the the sound department the the, the staging department the acting the choreography everyone is there it's, 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 it's incredible I mean I, I hadn't realized how compl complicated it is yeah and it's like making a movie in real time it's like making Ben Hur in real time. Every night. <laughs> Every night. Right. And it just you just hope everybody learns what they're doing. That does in terms of live performance, being on stage and and doing your job on stage versus standing back and watching your work. What's the differential? It's, it's tough for me. I'm used to uh, to being up there, and uh, and working hard. I have to relinquish some of that, some of that attention, some of that control, uh, and I'm learning to do it. But it's not easy for me. I'm sat back there, you know, like the coach. Yeah. Well, can, your team's up there. You can't get on the field. Get to yell at anybody last night? No. No, you didn't have to run out there. No, and no, I, I was kissing everybody at the end of the night. Has <laughs> <laughs> a director ever yelled at you? That's a good question. Uh, I pester them a little bit. You yeah. Know, I'm a rookie. 
I'm a rookie and I have ideas. Like, well, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Go, go away. Go away and write a song. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. It is interesting because it, you're. It, it's weird to think of you as you know having been uh, uh, an incredibly successful rock star, an incredibly successful uh, producer, and now you're in a medium. You're in a, a, a pool that's that you know. It, it's like going to high school or something, right? It, well, I, I'm working with people at the top of the the game. The director, the book, the book writer, the choreographer, the producers, all confident enough to say to me, uh, "This isn't working. It's thing, and you have to do better. You have to write a better, a different song." Hmm. It's a novel experience for me, and it's actually a good one. I like being a student. I like learning stuff, and I'm learning every day. But what an exciting feel! I mean, it's, it's fantastic. There's a magic in the theatre, without a doubt. Uh, now the bug has been bit. I can just see it in your eyes that the, 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 you have you now been bitten. So uh, it, it, how about this? Uh, the last ship after the last ship, or the mm. second to last ship, the prequel. I can't imagine a story that I, I would have a more of a compulsion to tell because this is a, such a personal story. But uh, I have got the bug, and uh, I, I'd be interested to see where this takes me. Did you go to see a bunch of stuff? on Broadway or all over the world to figure out what elements you want to put into this? Because well, it is new. You know, I was educated uh, as a kid by my mother's record collection. Although I never saw a show, uh, we had all of Rodgers and Hammerstein albums. We had uh, My Fair Lady, My Learner and Low, and West Side Story, and I ate those records for breakfast. I loved those records. I was taught music by them. So I know about show tunes, and uh, I, I never imagined I'd, I'd ever be in a play. But I did start my musical career as a bass player in the pit for an Andrew Lloyd Webber uh, musical really? called Joseph's Technicolor Dreamcoat. Oh, yeah. And I was way at the bottom of the pit in the dark with a little light for my music stand and right underneath everything. And so you get to see, and that's a great, that really is a great show. Yeah, yeah it is a good show. It really, I mean, that's, that's one of those ones that, that gets uh, sort of, because it's for kids, kind of, you know, and it, it sort of gets forgotten and all that. I think that's their best work. Yeah, and it's got some amazingly great music in it. All right, uh, so. As we, uh, how's Chicago treating you? Everything good? Chicago so always treats me well. I always feel very much at home here, and uh, I'm so glad we're here opening this play. Yeah, and I think it's a, well, let's hope that from right here to a year from now, you'll be celebrating the Tony, you'll be thanking Chicago. Sting, I'm going to hold you to this. You'll be standing on the stage with the Tony in your hand, <laughs> and you'll be demure, but you'll say, you know what, it all started in Chicago. Were it not for Chicago, I wouldn't be standing here right now. I will mention Chicago along with my hometown. There we okay. go. All right, there you go. I'll take that. The great sting. Thanks so much for being with us. For tickets, once again, broadwayinchicago.com, the last ship. Don't miss it. Thanks, Rob.